jacket, a blanket, a space heater. Kind of a bizarre weather night in Central Ohio for September 1st. Here you go, Dave. It all felt like football, though, and we got to work for week two, starting with the old school rivalry in Hilliard. Mazza was there with me. Davidson and Darby clashing for just the 11th time, but it seems like forever they've played. Wildcats get on the board first. A short field goal in a game where points came at a premium. Later, Davidson back on offense. Caleb O'Connor takes a big shot right at the ball, goes flying up. Panthers pounce on it. Then they capitalize on it. Their own short field goal by Blake Sawicki. That was all the scoring in the game until overtime. And it goes to overtime where Darby scores the only touchdown of the night. Darby beats Davidson 9-6. Pickard to North with a big test of Jerome Moore. So we thought it would be. The Panthers flexing their muscle in the second half. Already at 22-0. Jimmy Wyrick to Chris Scott. Got two feet down in the back corner. That's an outstanding touchdown grab. Then Kevon Robinson gets to work. Catches the short screen pass. Turns up field. And he is heading inside the five yard line. And they're smart because they go right back to Robinson to cash it in. Panthers in an impressive shutout, 35 0. Two programs to watch all season Hilliard Bradley and New Albany. Jaguars are absolutely loaded at receiver. Third quarter, we pick it up. Quarterback Josh Stewart hits wide out Corey Taylor at 16 yards. Elusive for the first down. Later that drive, another good one. Devon Anderson takes the end around. That is good for 14 yards. They're going to be a load to stop on offense this year. Trey Warner takes the pitch into the end zone. Jaguars, they win at 42-6. They go to 2-0. Westerville South looked like an entirely new program last week, getting future Buckeye Jalen Gill back healthy. Game two against Gahanna. The Lions were also winners last week, though, and they were making life tough on South. Tonight. That one-handed pickoff by Gahanna's David Williams, that's where they start, and they keep pouring it on right before halftime. Nail in the coffin, Michael Lowry avoids pressure, sends it to Jerome Buckner for the score. Lions are ready to roar. They win at 34 0. They're 2 0 tonight. Liberty facing a tall order to defend LaChristian Smith, the receiver from Huber Heights, Wayne, newly committed to Ohio State. First quarter, Wayne goes for it on fourth and seven. Rashad McKee finds Smith, and that helps set up a field goal. Second quarter, McKee scrambling again. This time, Edward Warner. Future Michigan State Spartan takes him down. But Zarek Brown goes down the sideline for a score for Wayne, and they win it on the road 17 to nothing. Go to Dublin for the Battle of Dublin. Kaufman and Scioto. The Rocks are primed for a really good year. Leading big late. Kaufman Sky Wayne battles strong for a first down. Same drive, fourth and one. We like to, uh, we like to label this as Razzle Dazzle. Marcus Ernst throws back to Griffin Hoke. It worked. 27 yards later, 38 0, the final score. Rocks roll 2 0. Neutral site affair at Otterbein tonight. Orange and Watterson meeting there, both looking for 2 0 starts. Third quarter, Pioneers up 20 0. Orange running back Graham Starn coughs it up. Watterson's Corp Harbaugh recovers it. Then Eagle quarterback Cole Andrews to Casey Calhoun fumbles it. Joel Sarpong gets the ball back for Orange. Next Eagle possession. Pioneer defense is swarming deep in their own end. Uh-oh. Going down. Safety. 22-0. That's the final. Orange improves to 2-0. Another pair of winners from last week. How about Thomas Worthington and Westerville North? Two programs that have been down for a long time. Thomas Worthington in the second. North refusing to go away. Jacob Woods calls his own number at 7-3. North leading. But Thomas takes the lead right back. Here comes Khalil Jones from the Wildcat. And he's off and running to the edge. 10 to 7, Thomas in front. And how about Thomas Worthington? They get the win. They're 2 and 0, 45 21. We also stopped into Grove City Christian tonight. Mike Jackson was there to meet a player who amazes his oh. teammates and even opponents alike. This kid's awesome. This kid is incredible. Quentin Blunt, that's his name. He plays nose guard for the Eagle defense. He's a talent and very strong lineman. Can you get that thing to go there? I somewhere? froze it up. Never In been. fact, he plays all across the line, but it's how he gets to the field that deserves your attention. The Eagles of Grove City Christian have a big weapon on their squad. Three-year letterman, Quentin Blunt. He brings 270 pounds to his bruising frame. That's a welcome blessing for first-year head coach Hank Patterson. Quentin gives the, the other guys that inspiration to go a little farther. And uh, they always look for him for leadership, you know, especially in the tough situations. Inspiration because he's captain, a standout player who plays with a prosthetic. You know, most guys could take 
take that disability and, you know, maybe back off. But that, he's got a drive, man, that I, I, man, I love it. You won't hear the word disability from Quentin. In fact, the only thing you hear, his teammates calling him QB, the leader. It's a blessing, you know, and, and a curse at the same time, but it's, it's okay. You, know, you got to give what God gave you, you know, make the best out of it. So that's what I try to do. And with his father now assisting on the sidelines, QB went to work fighting through to record a sack. And that's his first sack, so I'm really proud of him. I'm always talking about um, try to sack the quarterback, and tonight he did it. It's his birthday, so happy birthday, Quentin. Showing his teammates determination and leadership on and off the field. That's impressive work. Thanks, Mike. Up next, more from the Central Catholic League, including to sales trying to flex their muscle against the OCC and Harley looking for a bounce back in week two. That's coming up next on... <laughs> NBC4's Football Friday Night is sponsored by Atlas Butler and by Kroger. Howard Pohl, we've ranked DeSales the second best team in all of Central Ohio, and for good reason. They are loaded with Division I talent. Tonight was our first chance to see the Stallions put on a show in person. They did just that. Stallions hosting Lancaster tonight. Second quarter. They're up at the, with a lead, fourth and two at the Lancaster 38. No big deal. You give it to Brian Asimo, who has college offers galore. Really good player. Picks up 11 yards there. Then he caps off the drive with a two-yard plunge for the score. And DeSales goes up 14-0. 34-14 Stallions win this one big at home tonight. Hartley coming off its season opening loss last week, trying to get right against Central Crossing. Second half, they're up 17-0. Central Crossing Starts the second half. Ben Bone will hit Eddie Ferguson. It's a 31-yard score for Central Crossing, and they're on the board at 17-6. Late third quarter. Comets are driving again. Looks like they might try to get back into this game. But Akaija Carter is going to step in the way of this pass and return at 35 yards. Trust me, all this played out eventually. He'll run it back the other direction. A long developing play. Anyway, Hartley goes on to pull away 31-6. Jonathan Alder trying to get to 2-0 this season. Marion Harding visiting. Watch this run at the end of the first half from Jamie Dye. He will not say die. Dives into the end zone, and Alder moves to 2-0 this year with a 21-7 win. Final stop, Walnut Ridge and Watkins Memorial. Both winners last week. Scotts came to play tonight. First possession, Sinair Staples carries it for 29 yards. Watch him slash through the line, cuts right, and he's on his way. They'll kick the extra point after that. And uh, Watkins tries to keep up but cannot with Walnut Ridge. The Ridge wins it at home 27 to 9.